everyone welcome to the next session of answers tutorial today i'm going to solve yet another problem of static structural so this is the fourth question solve for complete analysis this is a figure given which is of a step bar you can see this is one complete bar and this is another bar both the ends are fixed and at the particular point there is a load of 3000 newton now for solving this by FEM method, you have to divide it into nodes and elements. Here it is already marked in the figure. You can see this node is marked as 1. At the position where there is a sudden loading, it has to be marked as node 2. Here there is a change of dimension, so there is node 3. And obviously the other end will be marked as node 4. Between every two nodes, there is going to be one element. So between 1 and 2, there is element 1, between 2 and 3, there is element 2, and between 3 and 4 node, there is element 3. The first element has a length of 10 cm, second has a length of 10 cm, and third also has a length of 10 cm. The area of this first step bar is 1 cm square. The value of Young's modulus is given as 10 into 10 raised to 10 Pascal. For the second bar which we can see, the area is given as 2 cm square and the value of Young's modulus is given as 5 into 10 raised to 10 Pascal. Now, if you look at this figure, you can either assume the cross section as a circle or you can assume it as a rectangle. Now, looking at the area given, I am going to assume this as a rectangle and solve. If you want, you can solve it as a circle as well. Since it is 1 cm square, it will be very easy if I draw a rectangle of 1 by 1 cm. And since it is given as 2 cm square here, I can make an area of 2 into 1 cm. So, let's get started on answers. I'll first go to static structural. I'll label it as example 4. Right click on geometry, new design modeler geometry. This is my screen for design modeler. I'll first change the units to centimeter. You have seen everywhere the dimension was in centimeter. So it will be very useful and easy for me if I use the unit as centimeter instead of millimeter which I have used in previous numericals. I'll go to XY, look at sketching I'll use rectangle I will give it dimensions it is 1 cm by 1 cm now you can see this has become too small I will just click on look at it becomes a decent size if you still want you can use your middle mouse button and zoom it now this has to be extruded to a length of 10 cm generate on this face I am going to create a new plane I will make a rectangle on it again I will not give it any dimension, rather I will go to constraint, I will click on coincident, click on this side and this side, I will just click on the two lines such that they take the dimension of the rectangle behind and it will become 1 cm by 1 cm. Also it will be very easy for me to place each line over the other extrude this is again 10 cm instead of add material I am going to choose add frozen the reason is later on when I go to model I will have to apply some load on this face so in that case I will require these two geometries to be of different color for me to be able to recognize the face so I am using add frozen here generate Again, this face is going to have a new plane, generate, look at, I'll sketch a rectangle. I 
Now this rectangle will have one side as 1 cm and the other side as 2 cm. So I am going to give it some dimensions. But before that, I'll just, I'll go to dimensions. This dimension is 2 and this dimension is 1. Now if you look carefully, this is off the center. So I will use some constraints again. I'll click on look at. I'll use coincident. Now you can see these two lines have become coincident. Now this line has to become the come at the midpoint of this line behind. So I am going to use draw option construction point. I am going to draw a point here. It's a random point. I will go to dimension. I will select the dimension from here to here. And this is going to be 0.5. Next, I will go to dimension again. And the distance between this point and this point is going to be 1 centimeter. So you can see very easily I can shift the line to the midpoint of the geometry behind. Now I will go to extrude. I will again extrude this new sketch to 10 centimeter. Here the operation will be add material, not add frozen. Generate. So this is my geometry. Next, I'll go to model and double click. Here starts the screen of model. I will align the body as per the figure that I have. Now, if you look carefully, these two ends have to be fixed and the load has to be applied. Before that, I need to change the material of both of them and also apply some meshing. I will go to mesh, sizing, relevant center, instead of course, I will choose fine, update. You can use any other meshing, advanced meshing method. I have already explained about them in my previous videos. You can go through them. I am only using fine mesh in this example because it is not of so much importance here. All I need to explain is the application of loading and solving of the numerical. Now, I will go to geometry. The first solid and the second solid both have the same material. For that, I will go to assignment, new material, ok. I will click here to add material, I will call it as M1. This M1 needs to have some property which is given here. The Young's modulus is given as 10 into 10 is to 10 Pascal. So I will choose isotropic elasticity. Young's modulus is 10 E10. Now, Poisson's ratio is something which you have to assign, otherwise your data allotment will not be complete. So, I am just giving a value of 0 0.25. You can allocate any other value of Poisson's ratio. Next, I need to create another material. I will call it as M2, whose isotropic elasticity has been given in the problem as 5 into 10 raised to 10 Pascal. So I will write here 5 E 10 and I will give the same Poisson's ratio 0 0.25. You can give any other value. Now these two material have been allotted some property. 
so i will go back to project and update project here in this problem you can also click on refresh project because you do not need the material of structural steel at all but i will still stick to update project so that it doesn't create any confusion in the mind of any user now i have come back to my model screen first solid has material m1 second solid will be allocated material again m1 third solid will be allocated material m2 so all the solids have been allocated material you can see solid 1 is m1 solid 2 also has material m1 solid 3 has material m2 now i will allocate the fixed and force over here so i'll go to static structural i first click on this face right click insert fix support i go to the other face right click insert fix support now this solid has to be suppressed for a while so that this face becomes very clear for the application of force right click insert force from vector i'll change it to components it is along z direction this is very important we need to analyze the problem align it properly so the value of z is 3000 i go to solid right click unsuppress body so the second solid is again visible to me i go to solution right click insert deformation directional again the direction is z which is very important to be marked right click insert stress von mises right click insert strain von mises right click solve I go to directional deformation. This is the directional deformation obtained. I click on probe, max and min, so I can see the maximum minimum deformation here. The maximum deformation is 2.014 into 10 raised to minus 5, and minimum value is going to be zero. And in between, wherever you want to see the deformation, it will be very easy to plot because I have already clicked on probe. So I'll just click on this node. Say I want to get the deformation at the node three. It is 9.4 into 10 raised to minus six. Node one is zero. Node two has a value of 1.8332 into 10 raised to minus five. Now these are the values. Next I'll go to equivalent stress. These are the values of stress obtained. I can easily click on probe and get the values at whichever node I want, and the max and minimum value has been highlighted. For strain, similarly, you can see the values here. Based on the color, you can judge the values from here. Hence, the different colors have been used. Red always indicates maximum value. Blue always indicates minimum value. and rest of the colors are going to indicate the change of values from one end to the other so this is the solution for the numerical i hope you have understood this numerical you can try it and if you have any doubt do let me know in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel hit the bell icon for more updates of my latest videos i'll see you in the next session with yet another problem of static structural thank you